Hi everyone, welcome back. So we're moving on to the next section. So in this section we're going to start building cabinets. But first of all I want to get everything that's underneath my benches laid out. So I'm going to build a battery box for my uh, deep cycle ones because they're wet batteries. It's going to be mounted along there. I'm going to just put together this battery box. I'm going to use uh, my pocket pocket screws just like I did before with the shower curb. So I've got my, my top and my bottom here, the lid and the base, and then my sides. So I'm going to put together the sides first, make a box out of it. I'm going to put the pocket screws on the inside, obviously, and then I'm going to pocket screw it into the base. And then that'll give me my solid box. And then what I'm going to do is from that box, I'm going to vent it near the top. So right up near the top here, I'm going to drill a hole right through to the outside. And I've got one of these little tiny Duro uh, attic vents, I guess they are. It's one inch attic vent. So that I'm going to drill through the outside and I'm going to mount that on the outside. So that'll be near the top to vent it. And then what I'll do is in the bottom, I'll drill, drill through to the bottom of the trailer and have a little pipe in there. And that'll provide fresh air in and then the fresh air out. Because uh, with these sealed boxes, you got to make sure you got to have ventilation. It's not a glass mat battery so this is how I'm going to do it. It was fairly cheap to do it this way compared to buying glass mat batteries. Here's my battery box. So it's all assembled. You can see all the pocket holes, all the pocket screws. So this is solid, super solid. And what I did is I attached these strips to the wall to this stud that's up here and that one over there. And then I was going to screw it into the wall and into the floor. So this thing will not be moving anywhere. For the hole, I mean for the vent, I'm just going to use some of this one inch conduit I've got kicking around. And uh, so this is going to be, this is going to be through here and all sealed up. You can see on the outside there, it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger there. So the vent itself is just a little bit smaller here. I'll just show you. So we've got this. This thing here is the conduit. And then here's our little vent. So that fits right inside that conduit perfectly. And then that'll pinch between the metal, uh, the aluminum siding and the inside. So. What I'm going to use to glue that in is I just use this marine goop. It's called marine goop. <laughs> Adhesive and sealant. It works really good. I love it. Waterproof and I figured if it's good for boats, this is aluminum and we got plastic and wood and everything else. But So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to install the pipe first. Screw this thing to the wall. And then on the outside, I'm going to install this little uh, vent, obviously with the louvers pointed down. So here's our finished product. We've got, uh, it's in here, super solid, can't move it. The vent up top, vent down below. I'll just put the batteries over a little bit just so it gets a little bit of airflow coming up and around. I was going to put a rubber um, along the bottom. I've got some rubber gasket material just to, just to give it a little bit of cushion on the sides and on the bottom. We'll get the batteries in here, get them wired up, and then um, get my disconnect switch set up on the other side. So we've got our battery box set up there pretty good. Uh, I'm waiting for a few lugs, 3 8 lugs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the water tank over here. Get that all set up so that I can start building my benches. So for the water tank I've got one of these unisils, uniseal for the um, fill. So that's going to go here somewhere in the side to fill it. And then I've got these um, bulkhead connectors here and this is just a standard PEX fitting 
you know like for what you'd put on your shower or whatever so that's going to go one up top here to vent it and one down the bottom for the drain so then I'm going to come from this I'm going to go into a T and then run like a, a drain out the floor if I want to on a valve if I want to dump the tank or it'll go around to a, the pump I'll probably put the pump over there somewhere but we'll see how it goes first of all gotta get the tank installed and get that all done up so I'm gonna put this rubber membrane underneath it it's a uh, rubber with a uh, some synthetic covering on the bottom and that's just gonna keep the the moisture these tanks they've always got condensation any RV I've taken apart where I, you pulled the tank it's always rotted wood underneath or moisture from the tank sitting and the humidity so this hopefully will, will enable it to not um, it won't be so much moisture sitting right on the floor although this floor is waterproof it probably wouldn't matter but it'll stop it too as it's moving around and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a strip of wood down here and secure it right solid to the floor strip of wood here and a strip of wood there and then a strip of wood along the back just to hold it down and so that'll help and then uh, I'll strap it of course a couple good straps all the way through but let's get that tank installed so the first step for the tank is I'm going to install the fill so uh, you're just going to use this uniseal here seal and to put that in they say yeah, there's a chart and it's two and a half inch hole saw for an inch and a half uniseal so it's got to be this brand I think I would think there's probably all sorts of different ones but anyways for this brand two and a half inch hole saw and you can tell on the back there it's almost it's just a little bit smaller so it doesn't really matter I don't think too much where I'm going to install this I'm trying not to go too close to the side because to be honest with you when I put the vent is going to go right in the top here so the vent will allow any air out anyways to make sure that the tank fully fills up so I don't want to put this too close where it's into the rounded part of the tank where it might be deformed a little bit and they really said you got to make sure that you do a nice clean cut with it not uh, not an oblong cut and then what I'm gonna do is I'll just clean it up a little bit with sandpaper the cut uh, the hole once I'm done and then I'll warm this thing up with my heat gun just get it nice and toasty warm and then I'm gonna put a little bit of that marine adhesive around it and slide it in there once it's in there this is just a, a standard inch and a half ABS fitting into uh, PVC uh, fitting here that's gonna go for the fill tube so this just slides into there and as it expands and pushes out on that hole it seals around the tank so I'll get that one in there first and then what I'm gonna do is use that hole once I get this hole in here to feed these ones in drop them in and then put them through wherever I want it and then I'll be able to just feed them in through this this inch and a, uh, two two and a half inch hole that I'm gonna cut up here Okay, so there we go so it looks pretty good just a few things that I kind of noticed while I was doing it first of all you got to go real slow with your um, hole saw because if you push through it it leaves like a jaggedy edge on the bottom but if you go nice and slow it just cuts through nice and, and clean cut on it so I've sanded it lightly just some hundred grit just to get the edges off feels really good I haven't sanded these one yet so this is my drain and I put it out this side like this is going to go against the wall over here and here's against the, to the center because it seems to slope downhill a little bit so I'll get all the last little bit of water out of it that way and then um, I put the the uh, the air vent the vent up top here so 
that'll give me again it'll get rid of all the air that would sit up here because it's on a slope um, installing these things I, c I noticed you can actually put the fitting in first and then the nut will still be able to go over top of it and do up so that's a pretty good setup because what you can do then is you can put your Teflon tape on here get it all fixed up throw this thing in the vise because it's got this hex head on it throw it in the vise and then really tighten this fitting up nice and tight so that you're not trying to tighten it up in there as it's turning you know then you gotta try and get a wrench in there and get the wrench on it it's just it's just difficult right this is gonna be hard enough as it is so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and first of all yeah put that in a vise Teflon tighten it up real nice and tight and then I'll put a piece of wire through here and then just kind of make a little bit of a ball at the bottom here and then feed that up through and then out here and then what I can do is just push the wire through and, and get it in the tank so now I'm just gonna sand these and flush my tank make sure I got it all flushed out actually I think I might vacuum it I think that's probably the easiest thing I can get my vacuum hose right down in there and rather than getting water everywhere and then probably not getting some of the bits this will suck it all out good uh, the reason why I didn't get a tank that already has the drain and fill and everything uh, well two reasons one this was on Amazon clearance for I think it was fifty nine dollars or something which Canadian that's pretty good like thirty five bucks US whatever so and I really wanted to put the, the holes where I wanted them I just didn't want them already pre-installed so that's why I went this way okay let's get the the fittings done up get them fed in through there and then get this all sealed up here's a little tip for when you're putting Teflon tape onto a brass fitting or any on any fittings if you start with the fitting I don't know if you're like me before I'd always like put it on maybe the wrong way and as you're winding it in it un it unwinds off you but if you start with the fitting on in your left hand and you take the tape and you apply it over the top of the fitting so as you're going over top so you go over top of the fitting always holding it in your left hand that way you'll always get your Teflon tape going the right direction. So we're just going to feed the metal wire through here and pick it up here. Turn the tire fitting on. So our fitting is going to go, obviously it's going to go through this way. It's got this little gasket on it here gonna make sure that it's not flipped like it just happened there make sure it goes in nice and tight you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, I don't know. hey Okay, so we got our seal here, and it actually fits in fairly snugly as it is. Get it in there, all right. Fits in okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat it up a little bit, and then I'm going to put a bead of uh, that marine adhesive around there, slide it in there, and then a little bit in here. We'll call her done. Wow, that 
that's good and tight. There you go. Give it a little bit of a slope. And it is solid already. So that's it. That's our tank. Vent. Fill. Drain. It's a little bit higher than what I wanted actually. I was hoping to put it at the bottom. Coming out of the bottom here. Straight flat. But uh, I couldn't clear my bench where I want my bench. By the time I got it up enough height to clear. That's quite a bit. You're looking at over two inches here. To clear that so uh, it was just too difficult and then I would have had it higher and how do I build a platform so anyways it is what it is this is what we're doing so this is where I'm gonna mount my stabilizer jacks I've got this one in here already I wanted to get it tucked in enough that it wouldn't be overhanging too far out here it's already going to be out quite far because I bought the seven inch pads for the bottom here because I wanted wide pads in case it was sinking the mud. So it's still going to be, you know, out quite a ways there. But I debated before like uh, angling them this way so they'd be closer to the tire so that it wouldn't hit on anything, you know, on the back. But then I figured it would just grab any sticks, mud, whatever would get stuck in there. Uh, if it was angled like this, you know, it would just get jammed in rather this way anything comes up and hits it It'll just get deflected off and then come back I'll just show you how I mounted those in there and then I'm, I've got ones on the front too I'm gonna be mounting the front ones though are almost gonna be following the frame perfectly uh, Just front to back I'll show you how I mounted these in here now one thing with the stabilizer jacks is it has this goofy kind of slotted wrench for it you know that was one of the downsides to it. but uh, I found two sets that were in the Amazon clearance and they were about half price so I thought well what I'd do is I just take this and I'd cut it and then I'll get a, a lug nut the same size lug nut and put it on here and then I'll just weld it and then I can just use my um, impact driver for it if I wanted to or if I you know if I don't have my impact driver I'll always be able to use my uh, lug wrench on it lug nut wrench so here's how I mounted it in there I just welded on this little piece of angle iron so that it would give it a lot of meat to grab onto so one of the bolts is in the angle iron and the other bolt is up through the frame and then I just went over into this cross brace here so I've got that through the cross brace, so it's super solid. I think it'll be good. But again, just to show you the difference. So, and I thought originally, well, maybe I'll just put it here straight out. But I thought if anything catches, at least this way it'll deflect. It'll hit here, deflect out, rather than getting wedged in between the frame and the jack. So now I'm going to weld up the other side and then put in my insulation up here. Okay, so let's talk about our electrical a little bit. We're not going to get into it a lot, but just what I'm planning on doing so that I can run my electrical underneath, I need to plan that out right now. So this is what I've decided to do. I have a bunch of this one inch conduit kicking around. It's just uh, from an old job. Anyways, so I'm going to use one inch, but you could pretty much, I think you even use three quarter inch if you wanted to. But I'm going to run this underneath my trailer. So I'm starting up front there and I'm going to have my seven pin plug go from the nose, from the tongue of the trailer in and then it's going to come up through this. It's going to come in here and then up here and that's going to be up there underneath my sink. So right in the corner there. So then from there coming back it's going to go into this other T here, conduit T and then from there that's going to be located right about here and then it's going to branch over to this side right around my diesel heater there and I've got this um, LB joint here that's it's going to come up in and up here and then from that this here is going to come all the way back to an elbow right back about here somewhere I'm just gonna even though this T is going to be out somewhere out here 
just because I need to clear my bench, I'm going to just kind of bend it, angle it back to somewhere right around here. So this way I figure I can just run my wires at leisure and I'll be able to, if I forget something, it'll be easy to correct after. All these um, T's and stuff, they've got these covers on there. It's just like running electrical wire on the side of a house or whatever. So you just take this cover off and then it's easy. You can see right down the tubes. You can feed your wire down there all the way along and then get it at the next one and then feed it up or continue on. So I figure that's a good way to do it. And then I'll just mount this right up underneath the trailer, nice and tight. So it will hang down a bit, but uh, I, I figure it's worth it just to be able to, to have the access, the ease of access on it. So I, I, and again, I think probably three quarter would have been more than enough, but it's just, I had one inch on hand of the pipe. So that's what I'm using. So that's what I'm going to run now. I'm going to drill some holes here and get that lined up underneath. So here's the finished setup with that conduit for my wiring. You can see uh, right there is one pipe. So that goes down underneath and then over there that's another pipe and then right up there right up near the front there's another pipe up here so this will be for my seven pin my seven pin cable will be coming in through here up and then I'll take this and I'll just mount it on the wall here Ugh. once I get this panel built it'll be mounted right under there and then I can run my wires back down in there and along to the back I'll show you what it looks like underneath. So here's what that conduit looks like underneath. You can see, so that's the that's the rear one, then it comes up. There's this junction right here, this T. And these covers come off, so you just pop these covers off, and then as the wire comes through, you can just feed them wherever, whichever direction you want to go. So that goes over to where my diesel heater is there. And then this pipe goes all the way to the front, and it's got another T right there, which goes up uh, by my sink, where my sink's going to be. So I just connected it with uh, just the normal clamps for these things, um, conduit clamps, and then just uh, into each cross brace. Over there, I had to use a, a little bit of stainless strapping and a couple washers, strap that up. So that's good. I think now it'll be good. It'll be easy to run wires. And if I ever want to change anything in the future, it'll be uh, easy to do so. So let's talk a little bit about water tank fitment here. So this is where I, I roughly want my water tank to go. You can see I've got my fittings in there now. I also, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this bracket on the top. So that'll hold the tank down. I'll also mount my pump on there. I'm going to put it on, uh, they're already rubber isolators on the bottom, but I'm going to mount it on a little bit of rubber also because these things are really noisy. I might eventually build a little box over it to stop the noise. A little bit more uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'll run straps pieces of strapping here and here all the way around up you know fairly high so it can't pop out and over and then I'll strap it across the top too of course but so that way this thing's solid it'll stay right where I want it so now I'm gonna put in my uh, PEX line so these fittings I'm gonna do all my all my uh, water lines in PEX. PEX is just these little crimp rings here. Fairly easy to do, but it does require a, a crimping tool. Oop, crimping tool. Uh, you can also get the little clamp ones. They're a little cheaper. Uh, or now you can even get shark bites, so you don't even need any tools. But these are a lot cheaper for me to for me to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this fitting. It's pointed the wrong way. I just don't have clearance between where my bench is going to be and where this fitting is. So I'm going to spin it the other way. I'm going to come this way. I'm going to T and go up to my pump. And then this other part of the T I'm going to run over to here and I'm going to drill through for a drain. So I'm going to put my drain there. Just going to put one of these little things there that's a valve I had kicking around so that'll be my drain valve 
be able to shut it off, turn it on. I'm not going to put an actual valve between the, the tank and the pump because, I mean, it's just a small tank. What's the point? I'll just drain the tank if I ever need to work on it. I don't need a valve off a tank. <laughs> uh, one thing they mentioned is with these pumps, you need to have flexible line up to the pump itself. So uh, it's, it's so that it doesn't put pressure on those little fittings because this PEX tubing, it's actually quite stiff. So it could put a lot of pressure on those little fittings, on those little baby pumps. So I'll do that. I'm just going to use a straight connector, PEX, because what I found is you can just heat this up, just really slightly heat this up with a heat gun, and it'll fit right over top of half inch PEX, no problem, like this right here. Just slides right over top of there. So you can use a combination of PEX and flexible line where you want to. So let's get started. Oh, just one other thing too. It's good to have a little bit of a, a straight cutter for for cutting packs because you want it fairly clean. Gives it a nice clean cut where it slides all the way onto the fitting and then the crimp ring will will go in nice and tight. But let's let's get started here. So just another few things I'm going to do is I caulked the back gap there because I was worried about moisture from the tank once it condensates on the outside of the tank running down and molding my floor underneath. So I, I caulked that gap and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some insulation in here just like that. Another piece of insulation over there and put the tank against that and then put my uh, boards around here just to keep it locked in and then on the bottom is I've got some of this rubber mat it's like a, it's a acoustic sound dampener for underlay. And I'm going to put that under here. And I'm going to put a few layers in that, on that side and only one layer on this side. So it's got a little bit of a slope this way. So I figured this stuff's soft enough it won't damage the tank, but still give me a little bit of a slope down to where the drain is. So I'm just laying out my fittings here, my PEX fittings. So I think I'm going to come out from my 90, come to a T. This is going to be a T and then I'll probably come to another 90 with the shutoff valve here. Put the shutoff valve in there, like on, and then uh, 90 out the floor, go out the floor. This one I thought I'd come out close to where the pump is. The pump's located right about here. So I'll come up and then 90 across the top of the tank and then out that way. Okay, we're gonna wrap up this video. So this is what we got done. Here's our water tank installed. So I've got this brace up top to hold it down. Straps, a few pieces of wood, things I've already mentioned. There's our drain valve. I'll hook up the pump and everything later on. There we go. Here's our battery box too, it's all done. So I'll talk about the electrical some other time, but I've just put these little hold downs in here for now. And then there's the vent, any 
everything that's covered in the video. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.